Okay. Hello. Hello. Welcome back to another episode of the Flying Cat Marketing interview series. Today I have Firas Rashid, who's the CEO and founder of Hook. Uh, hey, Firas, how's it going? Hey, Maeva. Yeah, great to uh, great to speak to you uh, uh, after seeing you briefly at uh, at Sastra over in uh, in Barcelona, your hometown. Yeah. So that was really fun. We were just talking about it before we started recording, uh, and just the impact of what it's like to invest in a in an event. Uh, and actually, so so how did that go? Before we get into the topic, the topic is about customer led growth. <laughs> um, but how did it go for you? You just told me, but maybe just tell tell the audience your experience of being a sponsor at Saster. Yeah, it, it was it was really good for us. Um, I, I think as we talked about before, I went into it. Uh, you know, we're a lockdown brand. We started in the end of 2020. So as a company, we've never done a physical event before. Uh, and we were conscious of maximizing the the avenues that we could we could have. So we 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 were really smart with what are the things that we can do around SASTA that will allow us to have a great ROI without a huge investment. So um, we threw a beach party, as, as, as you know, we had 343 people um, come into that, uh, which was about 15% of the, of the venue. That actually helped us generate a lot of leads because people, um, you know, some of the CEOs that were there were some of the CEOs of like $100 million uh, ARR companies plus. Those that perhaps wouldn't have come and spoken to us at the stand because they were there just to do a speech and spend time with their yeah. team actually ended up kind of interacting with us throughout it. Uh, and we got the chance to meet meet a lot of um, a lot of people. We also recorded um, a panel session on how to scale customer success. I think it was clear for a lot of people that there was um, you know this type of content is like much needed, and so yeah. that was really well received as well. So yeah, good busy conference, and it helps being in um, in your in your sunshine city as well. <laughs> of course, yes, Barcelona is amazing, um, and yeah, retention was actually a huge topic at Saster. Everybody was talking about retention, retention. So this is what we're going to be talking about. But before we dive into that, can you just give us a brief intro of what Hook does? For sure. So uh, my background before starting Hook was that I led customer success at App Dynamics. We were a Cisco acquisition, and I helped us scale up to five hundred million dollars in ARR. And I took those learnings about how to do that using data and built Hook. So what Hook helps companies do is scale quicker without unlimited people, predict churn, and to maximize the revenue from accounts. And we do all of that by watching user behavior of software and giving you a view of these are the accounts that will churn and upsell, and here's what you should do to make that happen. Love it. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about this, customer-led growth, how to market to your existing customers. Uh, so is retention the new acquisition? Yeah, it's, take? as you say, it, it's become an increasingly important topic. I think actually it's grown in importance over the last two or three years. So even before we talk about the economic uh, downturn that we're going through, it, it's important to look at the backdrop. So I uh, started my career in Credit Suisse as a buyer of software and uh, I worked there until 2017. And when we were buying software, uh, it came on a CD uh, or it came as a big hefty download and you were buying a perpetual license and then just paying maintenance on top. As we all know, the world has shifted to SaaS. Uh, I think that's actually happened slightly later than people think it has. So 2017, 2018 were the early signs of larger companies shifting to SaaS. These days, you're now seeing pretty big revenue com uh, numbers around $150 billion coming through the SaaS industry. And the real SaaS causes a whole bunch of problems, which are that um, customers can leave you quicker. So there isn't a heavy cost of installation, therefore it's easier to move. Uh, their customers are joining SaaS companies in the hundreds or the thousands, therefore it's impossible to go and build relationships with these companies. And in the middle of that, um, the retention has become more important than ever because what investors have realized is that if you have a high retention number, then actually what they're betting on is where your revenue is going to be in four or five years. So to give you an example, if you have a net retention number of 180%, within nine years, you want 100x the revenue from your existing customers without making a single sale again. And that means that in the old world, you used to get asked about net retention in the sixth, seventh, eighth meeting with a VC, today you get asked about it in the first 15 minutes. 
Um, so that's made it important. And then obviously at the moment we're going through um, a pretty dramatic tech downturn as a as a you know great reset of valuations. And that means it's more important than ever to look at retention because frankly, you've got to be able to grow your business in a sustainable way. And looking at maximizing the revenue from your existing customers is probably the easiest way of doing that. So let's talk case studies examples. How do you market to current customers because for we're not talking about there is customer success of course there is having a great product there is treating them very very well excellent white glove service uh, what can you do to market to them yeah it's it's a it's a really good question so i'm going to go back to my app dynamics days uh, and we we shifted as a business a lot um we predominantly in the early days were based on new customer acquisition in the later days, around 50 to 60% of our revenue was actually coming from increases in, uh, sorry, upsells in existing customer accounts. Okay. And that meant the way that we were doing marketing had to change. Um, so our marketing motion was predominantly based upon lead generation for new leads. And really, you, you can't just focus on that because if you want to drive upsells, it's important for you to be able to continue to market to your existing customers. So there's a few things that we did. Um, I think that we did um, account-based marketing really well. So we would marry up marketing uh, people within uh, account teams, within individual accounts, particularly the larger ones, such as large banks. And we would run uh, campaigns down to those individual, uh, in individual accounts. So that would mean that we would actually join um, roadshows that they were doing. I remember, for example, with Barclays Bank, we did an AppDynamics roadshow where we would actually showcase the power of the application to other areas of the business. And we did that in, in, in tandem with the existing buyers on the, on the customer. And it was great because they wanted us to showcase the great work that they'd been doing. We also did um, account-based campaigns on adoption. So marketing helped us with how do we incentivize campaigns um, in the account to increase adoption. And I can give you um, the, the um, nicest example I have was we learned early that if you asked people to use software or told them off for not doing it, in certain types of companies, and particularly those that where the change process is longer, it, it wouldn't happen directly. But we started to test using our marketing team. If we went in and ran competitions, what would start to happen? So we went into um, uh, the first account was actually a major airline. And we went in there and said, the, the person to build the best dashboard on our product wins a free set of AirPods. They'd spent $10 million with us. People were using the product, but it was in the dozens, not the hundreds. And all of a sudden, overnight, 150 people signed up to this competition and the product went viral. Uh, and the ROI was great because it cost us $180 to incentivize adoption across a $10 million purchase. Um, the final thing that I'll talk to you about on, on how does marketing partner with retention is uh, doing customer advocacy really, really well is super powerful. And what I found the most powerful was when you can use customer advocacy to create a closed loop effect. So what that meant was you take your existing customers that really champion your product and you're getting them to market your product to other existing customers as well. And you're creating a community within them. The way that we did that in AppDynamics is we created a campaign called Agents of Transformation. And we literally put our customers' faces on like online billboards. Uh, and we would talk about how they had driven change and other customers would want to go and speak to those customers. So we ended up having to start to create events that were for these agents of transformation. And it created this like really strong locked in community that people wanted to be part of. And that naturally started to lead in into some of the, the newer customers and lead gen for, um, for, for fresh business as well. So actually it's not just customer retention, customer expansion, but this kind of marketing also brings in new net new customers. For sure. I mean, it, it, you know, it, it's a fact that the more customer advocacy you have, the more sticky customers you yeah. have, the more people are using your product, you are naturally going to get a tailwind from there. Uh, we find that often some of the, the strongest and easiest purchases that our customers have are from people that move from uh, one account to another, having had a great time with, uh, with the product. So mm -hmm. I, I, I actually think if you focus on the retention and growth aspect, the lead gen comes in automatically, although yeah. you kind of have to start with a lead gen to be able to get the customers to expand. True. So what are some 
some other marketing channels you can you we talked about uh customer advocacy we talked about um what else did you mention we well basically just talking to customers a lot and getting creating things for them um what are some other channels to increase revenue from current clients or or to use customer yeah, ad growth I- I think one channel that is really underutilized uh, by, especially in the startup space, I think scale-ups tend to do this a bit better, but startups don't tend to do this very well, is um, the ability for uh, companies to uh, consume content that is relevant to their field, but not necessarily about the product, I think is really powerful. And so um, the way that I've seen that done in the past is, if you're selling a, a IT operations software, then you should talk about how IT operators can become uh, better at their jobs, but not talk about your product. And um, I see this happen in, uh, in other organizations. So we often will talk to our customers about how they can do customer success in different ways. And we provide actually free training for customer success for our existing customers as part of our marketing strategy. Um, because your customers are buying not your product, they're buying the solution to a business problem and your product is a tech delivery platform to make that happen. So what they're interested in is how can you facilitate other solutions to that business problem? Now, what you find is that companies are great at saying, here's an event to show how um, Google used our product to go and drive change. What they're not great at doing is to say, here's what Google thinks that you should do within your business to help with HR, IT, and so on. So Events is great. It's easy. It's also a fantastic new lead gen process. But we actually, within our own platform, measure how that affects uh, upsells. And we find that there's a very high correlation of that happening. Um, The second thing that I think is underutilized is uh, actually using your your app data and your in-app ability to be able to message to also market and, and upsell. So um, company that does this very well is HubSpot. You know, the moment that you you get anywhere close to using a, a new feature, you get a pop up that allows you to get a free trial that ends up with a phone call from a SDR within 25 minutes. And um, and actually, we we ended up upgrading our HubSpot because of exactly this a, a couple of days ago. Um, but I think in general, companies aren't great at saying we'll push things in app or we'll use product usage data to be able to go and drive. Uh, expansions and, and, and upsells. And I think there's a huge opportunity there. Um, we find that product behaviors are able to predict about 85% of the likelihood of someone going to spend more money without including any other data at all. So ignore any financial behavior, just look at behavior of that. And we, and we can get pretty accurate with whether or not they're going to, uh, mm-hmm. going to, to spend more money on an account. How is that different from product-led growth? Isn't that the the concept behind it as well? I think product-led growth works great for acquisition. I think that as soon as you start to do scaled uh, uh, retention, and by that I'm saying you've got deals that are worth a couple of hundred K that are on a contract, your problem is actually slightly different because um, you already have customers that are locked into your product. And what you don't know is, how do you get them from the 200K to a million dollars, right? So product-led growth, I think is great to say, there's one person in one company using Canva. How do we get that person to be paying and maybe add five or 10 yeah. users that, that are paying a couple of thousand dollars? The question is, how do you identify the couple of hundred K to a million conversions and start to market into those into those accounts? That's a different tactic because actually it's not just looking at the single mouse click. You've got to look at like consistent behaviors across there across that account and look at other accounts that have the same behavior as well. So when it comes to marketing for current customers, what, what are you using to measure success? Good question. Um, We actually overcomplicated this to start. I'm sure a lot (laughs) of companies do. Uh, And so I remember when we first started to market, we had, we had loads of different things we were trying. So we were looking at LinkedIn ads. We were looking at conversions direct from website. And um, I, uh, we had this like big list of um, data items that we wanted our engineering team to capture. And off they went and they went and, um, uh, and started to fill out uh, loads of stuff that would, would automatically fill out uh, from where the source was on our website. 
actually, we found that the simplest way to find out what the source of a customer was, especially for us. So, you know, we're a we're a platform that has a has a minimum uh, price of about 20K ARR. So everyone speaks to a salesperson in the process. We actually found the easiest way is, is just to ask them um, mm. and, and to fill it in by asking them. And that's important for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's actually really hard to look at like technical attribution of where people came from just purely from a, from a field. But the other thing we found was that there would be multiple touch points before someone would actually say that they wanted to buy a product. So um, we have uh, one large deal in pipe at the moment. Uh, we'll be one of the largest that, that we've kind of uh, ever spoken to in a company that's, that's uh, plus 100 million ARR. And their touch points were that uh, I'd reached out to this company and we'd had a chat with SES leader, but the timing wasn't right. Um, we'd then done some marketing towards them via emails. And then we had a survey report by the way, which is available to download from our site, we had a survey report that we published, which someone outside of this company had copied it and pasted it into a Facebook group. And the uh, CS leader from this prospect downloaded that report, went and read the blog post that I had written on my website. Uh, and um, then from that ended up emailing me and said, I'm interested in this. Now, the tech side actually wouldn't have captured her as a marketing yeah. lead at all. Because from a tech perspective, she didn't download the survey directly. She, someone else uh, sent it. And um, all, all the tech side says is that she had a meeting with me last September. And then she had a meeting with me from an email later on. And so actually, we just found it easier to, to uh, capture it manually. And there, we would attribute that to the survey piece because mm -hmm. it was the, the big thing that, that clicked to say they have a problem and we can help them solve it. Love it. Well, before we wrap up, I just want to ask, what's the number one takeaway that you think people need to understand right now about customer-led growth in SaaS? I think the most important thing to focus on is find simple data points that prove that what you're doing is, is there. Um, you know, I've shown already that even in lead gen acquisition, when you get overcomplicated, you might have great looking graphs, but actually the data's wrong. And what I found in, um, in my role in App Dynamics was that we created a really simple spreadsheet that said, what happens when a customer upsells? And what we found was that an average customer who was upselling was at 57% uh, of their uh, license consumption. When they weren't, they, they were at 29% uh, if they churned, for example. And we did this after spending years trying to build something more complicated. We eventually managed to do it from just a spreadsheet. And the power of just knowing that one number that relates to one metric is great because you can now revolve your whole organization around get this number to 57% for all customers because then we know we'll accelerate it. Yeah. So focus on data, but just keep it really simple and experiment on one or two numbers so that you can start to see what the effect of that is. Love that. I love keeping it simple. Um, Firas, where's the best place for people to connect with you if they want to talk to you more about this? Yeah, add me on LinkedIn. Uh, there's not too many Firas's on LinkedIn and thankfully only one, I think, that runs a CS platform. So <laughs> add me on LinkedIn. Would love to talk to people. Um, that survey that I mentioned before is available on our website, so hook.co, and you can download it without speaking to anyone. It's an instant download. We'll talk to you about some of the metrics you should be looking at for customer-led growth. Love it. Excellent. Well, if you enjoyed this episode, if you're watching or listening, please let us know. Say hi, leave a comment, uh, share it if you want, give it a like. Thanks again. And thanks for Oz for, for joining me today. This has been great. Thanks a lot. And that's the end of the podcast right there. Hope you enjoyed the episode, but please don't go just yet. If you did enjoy this episode, please leave us a review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. It'll help other people like you discover us and get the same insights, and it would really help us out a lot. Um, thank you for being a loyal flying cat and for listening. See you next time.